Hey everybody, welcome back to my kitchen. As you can see, we got the KitchenAid out again, so that means I'm baking. Um, today I'm going to show you my twist on a snickerdoodle cookie. You might have already seen my video, um, it's here on YouTube, of my pumpkin spice snickerdoodles. I've got one or two different recipes for snickerdoodles, mine and then my granddaughter Chloe's snickerdoodle recipes on my website, gregs-kitchen.com. You can go right there if you wanna look at them. This one um, I call a brulee snickerdoodle. I'm gonna show you why at the very end. So here we go. First of all, I've got my flour, uh, baking powder, and salt in this bowl. I will put the total amounts down below in the description and also on my website so you can print it out if you like. Um, I've got, I think, a cup and a half of sugar here, two sticks of butter, two eggs, and vanilla. Basically, that's all we're gonna need other than cinnamon. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the butter and the uh, sugar creaming together right now and don't want to waste any of that delicious butter we're gonna put the sugar in get this thrown away get my beater okay I've got my beater I like to use this one with the rubber on the side it just cleans up the sides for me um, instead of having to scrape it down as much I still do scrape it down but you don't have to as much because it pulls it all in let me get that going together here. My eggs are at room temperature, just as, as my butter was. Anytime you're baking, it's always better to have everything at room temperature. And I'm just gonna go ahead and bring together the baking powder, flour, and salt. So it's mixed a little bit. Now these are a great cookie any time of the year. They're really popular at Christmas. So I'm gonna show you my change in it that you guys might wanna try. Let me clean this up. Okay, that's pretty well cleaned together. Let me get a spatula. Wipe down what little bit is stuck to the sides. So it's all incorporated well. And now we're just gonna put in each egg, one at a time, and let it get fully mixed in before you add the second one. Okay, now put in the second one. First one's all incorporated. Mm. And I know some of you are out there saying, Greg, you need to do that in a bowl because what if the egg shell cracks? Yeah, I know. Sometimes I do, sometimes I forget. Let me rinse my hands off. We just say we got a crunchy cookie. All right, let's bring it all together. Right off the side. And we're just gonna add a little bit of the flour at a time. Don't want to put it all the way, make sure it's on low. If not, you're going to get a big old puff of flour. It's going to get everywhere. Don't ask me how I know. It's happened more than once. Let that get incorporated a little bit. And also make sure that you sift your flour. I did this before I started. That way you don't have it all packed in there and then you're going to have too much flour. You really should do it by weight. But if you don't have a scale, you can sift it and then just level it off at the top of the knife so you get exactly the right amount. Too much is going to make a really dry cookie and it's not going to taste good. Okay, let me put in the rest here. You can see some of that flour puffing up already. Also gonna now add about a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. Bring this all together. Scrape it down one last time. Make sure you get down at the bottom where that little 
bubble is nipple at the bottom because you will get flour caked in down there. Whoops, just a little bit. I'm not gonna waste it. And I know, I'm gonna say raw egg. I've been eating this 50 some years and I'm still here. Okay, here we go. Now I like to put my dough in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. As you can see, it's really soft. These are gonna spread out really far if you put, do it right now. Because like I said, the butter was at room temperature. The eggs are at room temperature. So we need to toughen up that butter just a little bit. I'm just gonna scrape down the side so it's all in one little pile here. Oh, I'm making a mess everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes and I'll be back and we'll get it all scooped up and in the oven. I do have my oven set at 350. Don't know why I'm turning that on. But I'll be right back in just a minute or so. It can be a second for you. Okay, we're back. I got the uh, dough, cookie dough out of the refrigerator. It's been about 30 minutes. It's stiffened up a little bit. So I'm just gonna take a one and a half inch scoop, cookie, cookie scoop, and I recommend always using a cookie scoop so you get the same size cookies. That way when you're baking them, some of them don't come out too done and some of them not done enough. Do about three at a time here. And in this bowl, I just have two teaspoons of cinnamon, about a quarter tea, cup, quarter cup of salt or sugar. I don't think salt would be good on these. We're just gonna scoop these all out, keep them about two inches apart. So you'll get about 12 on each sheet. These all in. Scooped up, I love cookies. Cookies are, especially chocolate chip cookies. I don't know if I've told you the story about my grandma's chocolate chip cookies and me eating way too many. And she's telling me, little boy, you better be careful, you're gonna end up sick. I ate so many, hot, fresh out of the oven. I got very, very sick. I could not eat a chocolate chip cookie for over a year. Thank God that's over because I love them. I love my grandma jeans recipe, which I have. And I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't eat them. And these are fun. You get the kids in the kitchen with you. Let them play with this. Let them roll these in the cinnamon and sugar. They're going to love that. They can lick their fingers. It's nice and sweet. It builds memories. I have so many memories of being in the kitchen with my grandmas, with my mom, my aunt Carol, I learned so much from them. And every time I'm in the kitchen, I think about them. Back when I get my mixer out, I think of Grandma Jean because her KitchenAid was always sitting in, her, in the kitchen on the counter. And I just, I don't know what it is about that. Just seeing that makes me, brings back memories of her and cooking out there in her farm kitchen. All right, so I got these in. I'm all done, I'm gonna put these in the oven. You're gonna cook them. 12 to 15 minutes. Everyone's oven's a little bit different, so check them. You just want them to brown a little bit around the edges and they'll be a little soft in the center. They'll set up once you take them out. So I'm gonna put these in the oven and I'll be back with you as soon as I get them all out. Okay, everybody, we're back. I just got the last batch out of the oven, turned off. We got about three, a little bit more than three dozen cookies out of that recipe. So if we stopped right here, this is my snickerdoodle re cookie recipe. As you can see, they're nice and soft. Let me get one. Let's just grab this one. It's cool. Breaks easy, nice and moist, a little bit cakey inside. Mm. Tastes delicious. Of course, I've eaten two or three since before I turned you guys back on. Now, the extra cinnamon sugar, don't waste it. 
get a half pint jar or a pint jar or something. And you see these little lids? Comes off the Parmesan cheese. These are perfect. They fit on top of your half pints. They fit on top of your pint jars. Use it for any kind of seasoning, story, anything you want. But instead of wasting that cinnamon sugar, put it in the jar, put it on your toast in the morning. I grew up with cinnamon sugar toast all the time. So this is something you want to save. Now, I'm going to take this to the next step. I've got one of my older pans here. You want to put it on a metal pan, some kind of metal, so you don't burn your house down because I'm getting ready to play with fire. So let's get a couple of these cookies. Whoa, a little warm still. I'm just gonna put them over here on this cookie sheet. And I'll just center six of them right down the middle. And then I've got some sugar. I'm just going to put over the top of it, nice little pile of it. Make it look like it snowed on them cookies. I came up with this back when I lived in Tampa. I kept thinking I was going to put it on my website. I never did. So now I'll wait until I do another cookbook and I'll put it in there. But I decided I was going to share this with y'all. So this is where it come, it, my cookies become brulee doodles instead of snickerdoodles. Watch this. This is my kitchen torch. I use this all the time in the kitchen. I use it for browning meat that I might do in the sous vide or in the pressure cooker. Uh, just put a little brown on it. It's also great for this. Now you could put these under the broiler in the oven. It's not as much fun. And just watch them if you do, so you don't burn them. We're gonna get some fire going here. And you don't wanna do it too long. You just wanna start going back and forth over a cookie. You'll see the sugar start melting and dissolving. You're gonna do a little Browning on top. When it starts doing that, go to the next one, let it melt. Let that harden a little bit. You don't need to do it all at once because you don't want to burn down cookies. We just want to brulee the top. Just like creme brulee. Believe me, that cinnamon when it toasts up, what a great nutty taste. All right. Okay, turn it off. Make sure everything's off when you're done. You don't want any propane leaking if you're using a torch. They do have the small, cute little kitchen torches. I've worked in restaurant kitchens. I don't like the kitchen torches. They're just too small. They don't last long enough, I like the big one. So that's all you do, just go over it, let it cool. I've got a few here that I did earlier. That's where I said, maybe you'd notice i missing a few. But if you can, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but they're all nice and crispy and brulee on top. So let me get one of these up. There you go. Nice and crispy. Mm. Crispy on top. Still nice and cakey. And smooth in the center. So this, my friends, is my, <clears throat> ooh, that's good, brulee doodles. I'll put the recipe down below. It's just my snickerdoodles, brulee on top with some sugar. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell. That way you'll know when I put up more recipes, give you some more unique recipes like this. I'm going to go through, through and brulee the rest of these. And I'll talk to you again soon. Take care. God bless and have a great day. Bye-bye.